my name is John Bixler. Uh, my background is in woodworking. I do have a woodworking shop. Uh, I've done it for 20, 25 years. And our challenge has been to manufacture uh, an heirloom quality box at affordable import prices. And the way that we've accomplished that is rather than logging on to a website for a Chinese manufacturer like, like so many manufacturers do uh, and choosing one of their models, what we've done is, is uh, we've gone to China and we've spent some time training 250 woodworkers how to finish and, and uh, manufacture humidors, starting with veneer selection at market. We've trained them on grain matching. We've showed them the process of clear coating. We've eliminated the use of any colorants or stains which contain pigments and cloud the natural beauty of, of, uh, of fine wood. This model, for example, is mahogany. Oftentimes you'll go into a, a booth or a manufacturer showroom and they'll give you a, ma a mahogany box or what they claim is a mahogany box. And more often than not, it's a sort of a muddy chocolate color. Um, mahogany has natural beauty all, all of itself. The, the grain tends to grow in different directions, which uh, when the light refracts off the grain, it actually presents a holographic uh, image. In other words, when you walk around mahogany and look at it from different angles, the grain will change and, and move with with the uh, with the. Interesting. Yeah. You can probably see it with moving the camera. So our challenge has been to uh, meet with manufacturers, sit down with them, explain choosing the correct veneers at market, how to apply them correctly, how to grain match, how to clear coat rather than stain, and most importantly, we have a process of hand rubbing. Uh, we do a, a rubbed, uh, hand rub finish between each layer of, of uh, finish on the box. What that does is make sure that the light's refracting accurately. So when the light hits the box and comes back to where your eyes, where you can see them, you're actually seeing what the grain looks like right. rather than what the stain looks like. Um, any more than that, I, I don't think I'm at liberty to reveal the process, but that's essentially, in a nutshell, what we've done. Okay. What about the interior of the box? The interior the of the box. The interior of the box is is crucial. Um, we seal the lids. Uh, we don't put a seal on the bottom. Uh, the proper way to seal the lid of a humidor is to fit them with a, a friction fit, miter joint them at the corners, and do not glue them in. The reason that you don't want to glue them in is that the inside of the box is humidified. Right. This piece of wood that goes around the inside of the lid is called the seal, and it has to be able to move. Wood expands and contracts radially and tangentially, and if you glue it in, you remove the ability for the wood to move. It's the ability for this seal to move with the adjusting humidity levels which allows the box to seal. Is there truth about you want the box to make a whoosh when it closes? When you drop the lid, it should never uh, slam. Uh, it should catch on the on the air that's in there and, and then close more slowly, which is exactly what these do. Nice. As you can see, they drop on a cushion of air, and that's yeah. accomplished by installing the seal correctly. Okay. Well, John, thank you very much. You're very welcome.